Good morning. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. I'm sitting out here in the tack shed. Got a fire going and got some coffee made and got a good pipe here. And just want to talk with you a little bit this morning. Uh, got an addition to the tack shed. I got my, went and picked up a desk and I got it out here. This is where I'm doing the writing this winter for that book that I talked about in the last video. We got, uh, we have a contract with uh, uh, Penguin Random House to write a book. So we're working on that. Um, people have, are asking, what's the book going to be about? Some folks have asked outright, what's a novel about? It's not a novel. Um, it's a, basically a literary version of, of the channel. Um, it'll be stories of things that, that I have experienced over the years and then life truths that I have learned from them. That's, that's what it's going to be. Um, so we, we're working on that and uh, staying out of the cold and finding our way through the winter time here. All the horses have been taken up on top, put on winter pasture. So they're up on a couple thousand acres of grass on the ranch up above. And so we don't have them down here. I get a lot of, I had a lot of young people contact me. Uh, over time and and uh, they're a lot of them are usually they're back east and and I mean young some of them are like 14 17 years old and they want to go into the lifestyle but of course they can't right now uh, they're in wherever Ohio or Indiana or Pennsylvania or Virginia and they're still going to school and they're still at home but they They have this dream and they want to know what can they do now, even as young as they are, what can they learn and how can they prepare? So I, I want to talk uh, to you young folks. Now, those of you who are not wanting to go into cowboying or, or wrangling or, or the horse world and, and you're not 17 years old, I invite you to stick around anyhow. Okay. Um, just get you a cup of coffee. Light up a cigar, get you a pipe, and uh, let's just visit for a little bit and see if we can't learn something and, or just get a perspective on something. Now, one of the ways that we can look at and think about a job is it's, it's an experience, right? Okay. So what is the best thing? to prepare us for an experience, another experience. What other experience? Here's the beautiful thing, any experience, any experience. Uh, if you start, if you take up sports, okay? If you take up sports and it doesn't matter the sport, all right? If you're in school, and you're wanting to prepare to go into cowboying and you're even remotely athletic and your school has a athletics program and they have basketball or baseball or football or tennis or golf, I don't care, whatever it is, that's a good experience to start. Yeah, Dwayne, how can that help me move out west and take up cowboying or packing or wrangling? For one thing, it teaches you discipline. Uh, if the boss says we're meeting out at the barn at 4 a.m. to start catching and saddling horses, and it's cold and the wind's blowing and it's raining, you have to be there. Now, if you wait until you're 18, 19 years old and mom and dad house you and feed you and clothe you and you live in town, you don't have chores and, and uh, you can sit in the house when things are uncomfortable and you wait until then and then you're out of the house and you're 19 years old and you catch a bus ride out to Wyoming or Oklahoma or somewhere and you get a job and the boss says, you be here at five 
and uh, you go out to catch the horse and it's the weather's wicked, you have no experience. Uh, experience in controlling your body and experience in doing what needs to be done regardless of your current comfort level. So the experience of joining sports and having to be at practice before school and having to get tired and having to get sweaty and get hot or get cold and be out on the football field when it's spitting snow and the wind's blowing, that is an experience as a young person that will help you be a better cowboy. Uh, being in shape, you cannot be a good cowboy out of shape. You can't. Uh, it's, it's hard physical work. Even the riding, you ask people who come to school who don't have a background in horses and we'll go out for, we'll have classes and then we'll go out for a two hour ride and they'll come back and they're just exhausted and they're wore out and they're sore and their joints don't hurt and they're just, they're out of shape because it's harder, it's more physical than people give credit for. But it's more, your experience teaches you the, uh, teaches you to you be in control of your physicality. That'll be a great help. Uh, having jobs at home, um, as a young person, it doesn't matter what kind. You, you can go and maybe today, and sometimes I'm a little bit behind times, um, but you know in the summer, spring and summer, even in the winter, you can go around town and you can find job sites where guys are like putting a new roof on a house or they're building a house or doing whatever. You say, Dwayne, I'm only 15 years old. Uh, go up and say, hey, you got anything I can do? Um, you know, one of the things on job sites uh, that's always needed is someone to clean up the dang job site. Because the carpenters, a lot of times, they're not going to do it. So the lumber yard brings in pallets of two-by-fours and they're banded. A lot of times they're wrapped in, in a Tyvek type deal. And so the carpenter goes over, the framer goes over, and he takes his claw hammer and he smacks that band or, or takes a knife and or a pair of shears and cuts those two bands and unwraps as much as he has to to start getting the two by fours. And then he starts pulling two by fours because he's getting paid to frame a house. And so over time, if you don't have a foreman who really keeps up on it, uh, you've got cut off two by fours and you've got this wrapping Tyvek and you've got metal bands and you've got junk all over the job site. And it gets hard to work around that. And guys don't want to stop the work they're doing to spend an hour cleaning up. So swing by these job sites and say, hey, uh, do you need somebody to clean up? Usually they have a dumpster there. They bring in a commercial dumpster and, and they just need someone to take the time to go around and clean up the trash and go throw it the dumpster. Uh, do it. You say, what do I learn about that? What will I learn from that that's going to help me in Cowboy? Number one, you learn to work for other people. And when you work for other people, you meet all kinds of people and they're not all nice. You have to be able to learn to work for people that are not nice. People that are abrupt people that are bossy, people that are, can seem unreasonable, people that are rude. If you're 19 year old sheltered and you come out here for the first time and you go to work for one of these guys and the first time he bows up and gets red to the face and, and starts in on you, you're going to crumble and you're going to mail because you've never experienced that before. Um, you'll be working around guys that are way ahead of you in the field. It'll teach you humility. It'll teach you physicality. Again, just like sports. There is, you say, well, what if I go and, and the only job I can get is flipping burgers at McDonald's? It'll be very helpful. Do it. Do it. Well, you doing how will that help me? Well, first off, you'll learn to work. You'll learn to do whatever needs to be done to get a job. You buy you buy you a brand new hat and and a big belt buckle big as a dinner plate and a new pair of boots and you show up at a dude ranch and get a job and the boss says take that wheelbarrow take that rake and that pitchfork and go around here and start cleaning up all this horse manure all over the place all these horse apples. Well, 
Well, you don't have the idea that you're too good to do that. You've got to start somewhere. And if that somewhere that you started is mopping up the grease off the, the back floor of McDonald's back there somewhere, scooping up horse apples, that ain't no big deal. That ain't no stretch. And so you can start there and you will be better equipped for it. Why? You'll be better equipped for that experience because you've got experience. All experience counts. You learn to deal with people. You work at McDonald's, you learn to deal with people. And until you get to the point where you're working a job as like a mule packer or something, uh, even then you will, but not so much. You're always dealing with people. Uh, and if your entire existence up to the point that you leave home is being around mama and daddy and these teachers that are in such a system that the kids run the place. It, it's like being in an insane asylum um, where the lunatics are running the place. Then everybody has always walked around you. That's something that parents don't understand today with this, this gentle child raising today uh, where you never tell your child no and you never put your foot down and say, hey, that was a stupid thing to do. That was a stupid thing to do. And now this and this and this are not options for you for a while until you figure this out. Now, people say that's terrible parenting. It's not terrible parenting. All right, think about this, okay? Now, we did this. My wife and I did this. We had small children, all right? And our good friends had children, and those children got the chicken pox, so what did we do? We set up a play date and took our kids over to play with them. Well, what happened? What do you think happened? They got the chicken pox. Well, Dwayne, isn't that terrible? Do you want your child to get the chicken pox? No, I don't want my child to get the chicken pox. Don't ask such a stupid question, all right? But is it inevitable that they're probably going to get the chicken pox one day? Yes, it is. I can't stop the workings of the universe, all right? But it has been proven time and time and time again that a five-year-old with a chicken pox is much, much, much preferable to a 22-year-old with a chicken pox on his honeymoon, okay? Or a 35-year-old with chicken pox. They don't deal with it near as well. It's a lot worse. So our job as parents is to set our children up to be able to deal with the unfortunate things in life that we cannot shield them from. That's why you got kids these days that are getting their butt busted by policemen because they smarted off to you their whole life and got away with it. They smarted off to their teachers their whole life and got away with it. They smarted off to each other their whole life and got away with it. And then they get pulled over for doing 80 mile an hour in a 30 mile an hour school zone. And they start popping off and smarting off to the policeman and he ain't impressed. And the judge not impressed. And they go get a job on a job site and they start smarting off to these calloused hand um, workers that work 40, 50, 60 hours a week building things in life and they're not impressed. Uh, and the boss on the job site, they, their boss comes around, they're sitting there scrolling on their phone instead of doing what they're supposed to be doing. And the boss tells them, hey, put the phone up and get back to work. And so they smart off. The boss is not impressed. This universe was here way, way before your kid came along. And the universe will be here when your kid's gone. So the best thing you can do for your child is to help your child learn the true reality ways of the universe so they can navigate through it. And so when you start working jobs, you start dealing with the ugly reality that is known as people. Because people aren't going to be near as impressed 
when your little feelings get hurt. That's why that's why no kid should go to college these days. That that's just the way. No kid should go to college these days because they're coming out the most impossible, pampered idiots that think that the thought that they have at 19 years old now, their vast experience in life and vast experience in the world actually means something. It actually carries weight. Uh, and a lot of times it don't. Okay, that's just not the reality of life. And uh, so just start getting experience. Now, if you want specific experience that that will transfer across over here, I mean, you want that too. That's kind of depending on where you're at. That's kind of hard to get. If you can drive machinery, tractor, uh, I've there's been I've never worked on a place that didn't have to drive a tractor. A lot of them have skid steers now these days. Uh, if you can work on a job site, a construction job site, learn to drive a skid steer. Uh, you say, Dwayne, what skid steer have to do with ranching? Uh, a lot of ranches use skid steers. They have hay forks on the front because they're short and they can turn in place. And so they get into tight places and they get into barns for stacking hay um, and for moving hay around on job sites. Some of them, they have tracks. And so they can get around in the mud and the gravel and the snow and stuff better. So if you can learn to drive uh, equipment like tractors and skid steers and stuff like that, that's that's always always a benefit. As you get older, start studying and get your CDL. Uh, your CDL, yes, uh, always helpful. A lot of these ranches, they need somebody to haul the cattle. And they need somebody to haul this truck. And if you got a CDL, that means you're a competent driver and you can do more than the one who just comes on and they don't have a CDL. Um, it's actually very helpful. Um, now you can try to find a job at a riding stable, uh, start learning some stuff. Uh, but if you're back East, I'm just, I'm going to tell you the truth right now. Uh, most of the horsemanship that you'll learn at a boarding stable or a riding stable back east will not transfer out here. It is not the same thing. Now, if you can spend some time on horseback, pick up your own balance and everything, just know that when you get out here, the signals are different, the tack is different, the thinking, the philosophy, it's all different. Okay. <coughs> and, and I speak from experience because I have a lot of students come through out here that they want to get in the horses. And so what they've done is they've gone down and they've volunteered at riding stables. I'll, I'll clean stalls and I'll do this and I'll do that if I can ride a couple hours a week. And, and they've done that for two or three years. And then they come out here and, and after a couple of days, they're like, this, this doesn't translate across at all. But you get used to horses, you know, that helps. And so it's, but you know, if you're not where you can actually I mean, chainsaw work, you'd be surprised. Chainsaw work is, is a regular thing, and uh, that's helpful. Fencing. But, you know, if you can't, just experience in life, okay? It's been proven that kids whose parents let them, allow them, help them get a job, whether it's a summer job, uh, whatever it is, at a young age, they're more mature, and they're more able to handle uh, difficult situations, new situations, and situations that are not comfortable, and people that are not comfortable, and people that are not um, convenient, okay? So just keep keep growing. Uh, read, I, as you know, I'm a big proponent of reading. Uh, you, Dwayne, read what? Um, you know, it doesn't matter as much as you think it does. The what, okay? Um, and metaphorically speaking, your brain is a muscle. Now, I always get some wag get on here and say, I am a, I'm a whatever from a college degree from wherever, and the brain is not actually a muscle. I'm going to tell you, shut up. It's a metaphor. Stop and think, all right? Quit being such a know-it-all, all right? The brain is like a muscle. Tell okay, you like that better? 
The brain is like a muscle. The more you work it, the stronger it gets. And so the more you expose yourself to new cultures and new thoughts, new ways of looking at things, new ways of approaching things, the ways other people approach things, um, the better you're able to handle things in real life that show up that you need to experience. Um, and uh, I don't recommend garbage. Now, my definition of garbage when it comes to literature might be different than yours. And, uh, but read because the quality of what goes into your brain dictates the quality of what comes out of your brain. All right. And so stretch it. Now I, I'm, you know, at my age and my size and my strength and, and whatever it is or isn't and my physical level, if I go and I pick up a five pound barbell or kettlebell and I just start doing this I can say I can tell everybody I'm exercising I'm exercising I'm exercising and you can pick up these you know these modern writings for young adult literature and stuff and you can read and you can say I'm reading I'm reading I'm reading but it's like me doing a five pound barbell I'm exercising I'm exercising but you're not really putting anything into it no more than I am and you're not really going to get anything out of it, no more than I am. Nothing like you could get out of it uh, if you actually stretched and read some difficult stuff and some stuff that's that you have to actually stop and think and work your way through. Um, and I and there's you know there's a lot of stuff out there. You say, Dwayne, what what could I start with? Um, you know, there's always you, you know. I, I'm just, I'm looking here in the, in the video on the camera and I just happen to notice, you see these two books right here? These are my two favorite books in the world. All right. One is the King James version of the Bible. And, uh, because I love the English literature of it. I mean, I, you know, of course the doctrine and what's in it as a Christian and all that, but I refuse to get a modern version that dumbs it down because it can't touch the majesty and the strength and the power um, of the English language that's in this Bible. And the other one is Longfellow's Complete Poems and Illustrations. This is, outside the Bible, this is my favorite book in the world. If I was going to be stranded on an island for a year, and they're like, Dwayne, you can have one book, it would not be Marcus Aurelius' Meditations. Which, which is a top choice in my books. It would not be Sun Tzu's Art of War, which is a top choice in my books. Uh, it, wouldn't, it, it would not be any of those. It would be this book right here. This book, in the poetry of this book, it's got the English language. Um, it's got heart and soul. It has history. Uh, it makes you work to read it, but at the same time, you can appreciate the beauty that's in it. It really expands the soul and the mind. Um, and so you don't have to read, you don't have to just read books on the best way to become a cowboy. All right. You want to expand your mind. You want to expand your horizons. You want to expand your brain. Uh, and so you don't want to pick up little light weights. You want to pick up heavy weights. You want to read stuff that means stuff. You want to read stuff that will expand. All right. The way you look at things. And you will, you read stuff, real stuff like this, and you will meet the people in that book. You'll meet them on the job site. You'll meet them. They'll have a different face. They'll have a different name. They'll come from a different country, but they're the same characters. They're the same people. And you'll be like, I know what this is. I know what this is. Okay. So, I say it all the time. I'm going to say it again. Turn the dang TV off. Get off your butt. Get out of the house. And go find something. Find something to do. And when you're home, find something meaningful and worthwhile to read. Find something to study. And make contacts and make friends. And never lose sight of your dream. All right? Now, I don't know. I hope there's something there. I, I think you 
when I started saying what this was about and when you wrote me, uh, those of you that wrote me, I think you were looking for something else. Um, but there's not something else. There's not anything that's better. Um, and so there you have it. Okay. I hope that helps. Uh, let's cover a little bit of business. Um, I don't, I smoke pipes more in the winter than I do in the summer. And I don't usually smoke pipes on videos. I try sometimes, but I get to talking and I forget about them and they go out. And uh, cigars are, seem to be easier for me to keep, but I've got a Savinelli Trevi today and I'm smoking uh, this Kringle Flake Holiday Edition 2022. This is the stuff that still has that special edition Perique in it. And I bought a bunch of it stocked up on it because I like it. I like it quite a bit. Um, but uh, we, there was a lot of confusion about the, uh, the lighters on Shopify, the brass ones. And I don't even have mine out here that are engraved. What happened was those lighters are armored brass. Um, and they're uh, they're tumbled armor brass, so they're they're not common. All right, they're a little bit special. They're heavier made, and uh, so my engraver had three different sources for those lighters, but the the demand for those lighters was way more than he or I either one expected, and he got all the lighters from all three of his sources uh, and sent them out and then didn't have any more. And so he had to wait for those guys to start making more of these, of these special lighters. And so I think everything's caught up. Everybody's caught up. And some of you have waited quite a while and we got a lot of emails. Hey, where's my lighter? 99.999% of everybody was super courteous, super polite about it. Uh, but that's what happened. And so I talked to him the other day and he has, he had got more in and he was engraving them and sending them out. So that, that's what the story was on that. Uh, the t-shirts, we got the t-shirts. I bought a bunch advanced in stock. So we have them in inventory. So we shouldn't be running out of any of that stuff, but that's what happened to the lighters. Those are special lighters and they're engraved in their unique deal. They're, they're not just snatching them off a the shelf in Walmart. Okay. So you got to be kind of patient about that stuff. All right. So I, I just wanted to, just wanted to clarify that. I think that's about it. Oh, mama got it. For those of you who aren't uh, subscribed over there, mama made a video this week on making homemade campfire biscuits in a cast iron skillet. And, and it's, it's fun. It's, it's pretty cool. And so uh, if you haven't met mama's channel yet and you haven't been over, she don't post very often. So it's kind of special when she puts something up. Um, but you want to go check that out. It's, it's dry Creek mama and uh, go over there and, and see what she's got up and see what she's done. And so, uh, the other thing is I've got a lot of people wanting to know, Dwayne, man, make more content about pipes and your pipe collections and how to pack and light and, and I can't do that on here, all right, because of YouTube. And uh, and so, you know, maybe one day I'll get back over and start ginning up on the rumble again and put more stuff on there. But right now, uh, I just got I just got more on my plate, uh, and I can't do everything. So, um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of YouTube stuff out there on how to light pipes and how to properly smoke a pipe and all that stuff. Um, and so they don't need me to go over it again. So anyhow, I guess that's it. And so just keep, and there's no age limit. Folks, just keep growing. Just keep growing. Keep expanding. Like we talked about in the last video, if you're not <clears throat> experiencing some sort of growth, some sort of adventure, some sort of expansion, <clears throat> then you're not living. All right, you're already, you're already dead. Your clutch is not engaged and you're just coasting until you hit the wall. All right. 
And uh, so just keep living. All right. And if you're young, start living and uh, figure out who you want to be, the kind of person you want to be, and then begin that journey. And don't ever quit that journey. All right. So until then, be logical, be reasonable, be safe, be curious, and have fun. And we'll catch you guys next time.